Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Heart Farm 4 and our United States vs. World Communism Let's Play. Uh, so you may have noticed there was not a video on Monday. I did forget to mention on that Sunday video, because uh, I do sometimes take for granted that each series you know, brings in new viewers who might not know this, uh, but I don't typically have videos on Monday. Uh, that's because I work all day on Sunday, you know, I work a, a very long shift, uh, and then you add in drive time. There's just, there's not much time here at the house on Sundays for me to record anything. And uh, on a new series, I'll often have a Monday video just for that first Monday since it's, you know, a new series. Uh, and I can just record two videos on Saturday, one for Sunday, one for Monday. But when I have multiple videos coming out on Sunday, then it makes it very difficult because I'm already recording multiple videos on Saturday. So, so it just wasn't possible to have a Monday uh, episode for this this first week, and we won't be having any Monday episodes from here on out either. Uh, so just be aware of that, because sometimes I'll forget to to remind you guys about it. All right, so let's go and get started in today's episode, where we'll definitely be declaring war on the British, because uh, you know we we only have a few more months left of this uh, of this focus here before we'd have to find another method to declare war on the communists. So it's just better to declare and warn them this way. Now. We could send an attache to the French if we had 100 political power. As you guys see, we're at 44, because uh, we, we desperately need more army experience, guys. If the Canadians join the uh, British faction, then we'll be able to get some, some experience naturally just from declaring war and, and fighting their troops. We'll have to see what happens here, but obviously the focus in the uh, beginning of the war is going to be on the Navy and the Air Force try and sink as many British ships as possible. Again, I'll show you guys what I did with the fleet here once they get all moved around to their, their locations. All right, so that's the carrier fighter. Let's go ahead and get, so we already have the, the carrier naval bomber going. All right, excellent. Uh, so I think we'll only have one going here, uh, just working on one thing at a time here on the planes. Uh, well, you know what, actually, we'll do the close air support, and then after that, we'll only have one going at a time. So yeah, we're gonna get those knocked out. I think we should get those. All right, so we got to go ahead and update our equipment here. Get the new carrier fighters. I can find them here. Oh, right here at the top. All right, excellent. So I'm going to get those updated. Notice we are lacking in some resources here, guys, just a little bit. Uh, I suppose we can go ahead and step up our trading a bit. And trade with Australia. They might be a future enemy, but... Uh, again, all of these are future enemies. One thing that has gotten brought up uh, in that previous video, as well as a couple other videos, uh, quite a bit, is changing up our trade laws. So as I had mentioned earlier in the series, I, I would rather trade, use our civilian factories to trade for the resources, uh, you know, here in the beginning, while we still can, because once we go to war with everybody, you know, we obviously won't be able to, uh, uh, to trade with anybody anymore. And so I feel like we should keep this with the you know the construction speed and then most importantly the research speed plus 10 percent that's very nice and then the factory and doctory output of plus 15 percent that means we're going to build the the equipment and the ships a lot faster i feel like we should keep this as long as possible so as long as we can trade for resources even if it is with future enemies i feel like that is still worth it uh, so that's the reason why i haven't tra uh, changed it up but a lot of people bring that up like you know we can fix a lot of our resource issues if we changed from free trade to like you know, we could go export for or we could even go all the way to the limited uh, exports, though it looks like that's not quite an option. We might have to wait until we go to war first. Uh, but yeah, we could go ahead and change these up. But again, I feel like uh, we should just trade for resources while we can and get those uh, bonuses that we have with the free market. So we're going to do that for now. And we'll change it up later. And it's not going to fix our issues, though, guys. Uh, if you guys recall in that communist series, we went all the way, eventually... We went all the way over to the uh, uh, closed economy, and we still didn't have enough of the steel for our uh, all of our factories and dockyards because you just get too many, and, and the United States just doesn't have enough steel uh, for all that. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the fleet here, guys. But yeah, I think we'll still have resource issues in the late game, even when we ch uh, change it up. So we have our main uh, fleet here, which has a total of eight task force. Uh, so this is the main task force that's going to be engaging enemy ships. So it's got our most modern uh, ships in here. And I made sure that we didn't have any of the old battleships that were going to drastically decrease the speed. The old battleships are just too damn slow. Uh, the whole, whole task force would be really, really slow. So this fleet doesn't really have a lot of battleships, guys, because we only have two of the new ones. Uh, so they have the, the only two that we have here. So we have the four carriers, 
So we have a, you know, that's the max amount of carriers you want to put in a task force. After four, they start getting a penalty. We have the two battleships, and then we have uh, a bunch of heavy cruisers, seven heavy cruisers total. The heavy cruisers actually have uh, decent range uh, and de decent speed, so it's not really uh, hurting the fleet at all. And then we have a total of 10 light cruisers. I think it's four attack cruisers and then three support and three torpedo. These guys still obviously need to train here, so we're going to do that here in a minute. Uh, I guess we'll set them up as soon as I finish talking about this. And then we have destroyers here. And we don't have as many destroyers as, as I'd like, uh, but I didn't want to put any level ones in there. And this is all we have. Uh, we have 26. And these are the threes and the twos here. Uh, and I think it's just uh, a couple threes. Yeah, that's it. Just a couple threes here over the top. So uh, let's go and get these guys training up. We're going to let the whole fleet train. It'll let us get a, a bunch of naval experience. And we could just pull these ones out, but we're not going to do that. We'll just let them all change. Uh, excuse me, all uh, train up. And the reason why is because we're going to want to train up the carriers as well, even though they have the experience. No, they haven't moved yet, so we got to move them over here. Uh, so let's actually take them off the train, and we need to get them moving over to uh, our largest naval base here, which might be Boston at 8. Oh, no, no, no. We need to move them into Virginia. So we're going to move them into here, and then we'll get them training. And the reason why we want to train the whole fleet, uh, other than the, the extra naval experience, is because the carriers, uh, we want to train up their planes. And you can't do that unless they're on a mission. So we'll just put them on the training mission and let them uh, do that. So then we have a second uh, task force here, which only has two carriers. They'll get, we'll probably give them the, the next carrier. Uh, so they have three carriers total. And then we have the five level one battleships here. So uh, including the Pride of the Fleet, which we do want to change that to a newer battleship, but it's it's a lot of political power and it's really not a priority. So they have the five battleships, they have the two heavy cruisers, and then they have uh, eight light cruisers. You can see how those are broken down. And then they have uh, 18 destroyers, but they're all level one destroyers, so they're, they're pretty cruddy overall. Uh, so the idea here is these ones, these two fleets here, are going to be the ones doing our strike force. And we're gonna have two of them to be able to engage in two separate areas. Obviously, this is our main one. This is our most powerful one. That's the one we want to get into the big battles. But this one should be able to do all right uh, in those battles. And then we have these two here, which uh, as you guys can see from the icons, what they kind of uh, focus on here. And these two here are gonna be the ones that are gonna be supporting naval invasions, which the only uh, naval invasions we'll likely do early on here is into Bermuda. And then I suppose we might do some invasions uh, over here in the Caribbean as well. Uh, the, any, well, you know what? Never mind. Let me take that back because this is no longer uh, British territory here. Uh, but if the French join the British faction, then we'll have some islands to, to invade here. We can also invade over here as well. So we'll have a few locations we can invade if the, the French join. Uh, of course, they also have their little island here that we can try and take. I suppose we will have to do an invasion into here as well if we want to grab that. Uh, from the Canadians. So we'll have a few invasions and those two task force will be supporting those invasions uh, because they're I don't typically put battleships in uh, Task force that are are set to do this But because we don't really need to be in the Pacific and so I have a very small Pacific fleet right now It gives us a lot of battleships that are free and so might as well use them uh, for something and so we we'll use them for uh, For these naval invasions So maybe we'll take the battleships out once we start fighting in the Pacific so then we have four task force that are going to be assigned, as you can see from their icon here, uh, that they're going to be assigned to the patrol mission to try and find the enemy fleets. Uh, so we'll have four of those. And this is going to be our our fleet that's going to be uh, assigned in the uh, Atlantic and, Carib and the Caribbean. Uh, so this is going to be their area of operation. And as you can see, they can't operate very far due to range. But they can operate as far as we need them to, which is probably going to be the coastal areas here and then maybe here. Now, one thing I didn't do is see if we had any of the uh, the mining ships. It doesn't look like any of them got completed just yet. Not that I'm seeing here. Yeah, because these are all the, the more modern ships. And I believe we do have them set up to have that icon. Yeah, so they just haven't built any yet. We'll get our first one built on the 17th of March, uh, so very, very soon. And then we'll set them up in their own uh, little task force. So then we have the submarines. Uh, this is going to be the Atlantic side. That's why it's a bit larger. They have a full, well, they have nine task force. We'll give them another one. Uh, so again, the icons tell you what they are. You know, we're using this icon for our level twos, while the jellyfish icon will be for our level ones. The level ones are 10 submarines, while the level twos will be five. Then we have the, the uh, Pacific side over here, which, you know, obviously we're not going to be using them much, but 
you know, we don't need this many submarines over here, frankly. Uh, we can always pull some from over here if we start taking losses. And so we have the Pacific side over here. Now, I do want to get all these guys moved because I didn't do any of that because they're still kind of uh, getting to their locations. Uh, so let's go and make sure that uh, these guys are all training right now. But let's go ahead and stop them from training and then get them moving over to just a large dockyard. We'll do them right here in Philadelphia. We'll get them all moving over to there for now. Uh, same thing with all these guys. We're just going to have to stop training for a little bit. So that they can all move over to Virginia. So we're going to get them moving. And then these three as well. We need to move on over here. Alright, excellent. So the, the purple army can... Or excuse me, the uh, purple fleet can stay over here. Since that will be our Pacific submarines. As far as who's commanding. Uh, so we got Halsey, who I want to get trained up to be our best admiral. He's going to be training... Or excuse me, he's going to be commanding the main fleet... Again, main purpose for that is that trait that he has, uh, the bold one, uh, if we can find him in here. Again, that naval speed and damage increase, that's really, really nice. So we're going to do that even if he's not necessarily, you know, he's obviously on our best admiral as far as the skill goes. Uh, it does seem like he might have a trait to get. Yeah, he does. Uh, so we could do either the lone wolf or the concealment expert. I mean, this is like our main fleet here. So we don't really care so much about visibility. Frankly, I don't really care about any of these. I'd prefer that he gets some other stuff here. Uh, you know, get one of these ones. I don't think he'll get any of these. He might get fly swatter. There's a chance for that. Air controller, he should be able to get that. Or the iron sides. You know what? Neither one of these are all that important uh, for this particular fleet. So I think we're going to await. Because remember, he can only get so many traits. Uh, we'll see if he has anything here. He does. Uh, does anything help us? Uh, concealment expert, visibility, that would actually help. Yeah, we'll go ahead and give him that one. He's a submarine, so that does that does help. And um, then retreat decision chance plus 25%, that would help as well. So we're going to grab him that one. And then uh, over here we have Spruance, and he's going to be commanding the other submarine fleet. And, and I feel like the reason why we have this one, uh, him in command of this one here, is because of the traits he has. I thought it was a good choice here for him. Plus, I think he has, if I'm not mistaken, he has something here. Yeah, cuts corners, so they increase damage but lower defense. I think that would be helpful for submarines. Uh, submarines don't have much of a defense anyways. And then, uh, of course, Spruance is right here. All right, so let's go ahead and get him some traits while we have the uh, command power. So we can do Lone Wolf or Concealment Expert. Again, I think Concealment Expert is the most useful one uh, for submarines. So they can get out of there when they need to, when they're being engaged by like, you know, uh, destroyers or whatever they're trying to sink them. Uh, trying to sink them, excuse me. So Nimitz will be over here in the Pacific, as he was historically. And uh, I don't know that any of these are going to be necessary over here either. Again, I'm, I'm kind of wanting the traits to be, I mean, either here, which I don't know that we'll get. Most likely we're going to get these ones here. And so these are the ones that we're going to want to to give him. Uh, so yeah, I don't think we're going to get any of these, because remember, they do have a, a limit on how many traits they can get. And then we have Admiral Burke over here, the yellow army, is, excuse me, the yellow fleet. We're going to go ahead and get all these guys moving over here, stop them from training, and get them moving over to Florida, I suppose that works. So with the dolphin icon here, that's what we use for anybody that's going to be doing the convoy escort. And so Burke will be doing that, because he has the fleet protector, which is a plus 20% screening efficiency and that also lets him go down this route here so we can do the destroyer leader which is uh reduced vis visibility increased damage and increased torpedo chance or the lancer which is torpedo screen penetration uh so yeah i think we're gonna do this one guys to the destroyer leader yeah let's do that one and then we can do the hunter killer uh submarine attack plus 10 percent or submarine detection plus 20 percent i mean you get both of those not or so yeah we'll go and do that We'll see if he has any more. He does. All right, excellent. And yeah, we can even get uh, these ones as well, which would, which I mean, these would uh, uh, definitely help since I think the destroyers here have torpedoes. So yeah, you could get those ones, I suppose. But the main thing they're probably going to be fighting doing this job here is submarines. So neither one of those would help against submarines. Could do consumer experts so that they're not detected by enemy fleets that are attempting to uh, destroy them. I suppose we'll do that. All right, excellent. So that'll be all his. All right, so we've got everybody upgraded. 
got all of our fleets moving around, getting to their locations, and then once they get there, we will uh, train them up, keep them training uh, for the naval experience and stuff. Although, we probably want them to have time to repair. Uh, so we got our reaffirm, reaffirm the Monroe Doctrine, and so now we're going to go for War Plan Gray. And, okay. But we had a... Uh, had to get something selected there for the uh, uh, decryption. All right, so we have knocked out the Avengers. That's our naval bombers for the carriers. So we're going to get those building here in minutes. And uh, we're only going to keep one researching planes, I suppose. I don't know that we'll get scout planes, guys. I've, I've talked about this in previous campaigns, and it just feels like it's not necessary. Like, it's not that hard to get uh, your intel up. And so to build a, a plane that you then have to assign... It just seems unnecessary, like you just don't need it. Until it's just so easy to get in other ways. So I don't know that we'll get that, guys. Uh, so here in 1941, we could go and get the radar. that help our ships, of course. I don't know if we'll need fuel refining. We'll see how the war looks, how much we're actually using, uh, how much fuel we're using, and whether or not we need to get that, because I can't really say uh, if that's going to be necessary. We could go and start getting the 1941 tanks, and I think we will. We'll go and start with the light tanks, since we actually have those out there. So I'm gonna get those knocked out. All right, so we need to get those naval bombers updated. There we go, beautiful. Okay, so these guys, of course, are training up those new ones that we got here. I don't know that anybody else, yeah, we do have troops that need to train, so we're gonna do that. Make sure everybody gets fully trained up. We also have units here that are training. I don't know if we can add any more. We'll take a look, it's like infantry equipment is an issue right now. And finally, France has gone communist. All right, took them long enough. Uh, and they are still engaging with the Italians. The question is, do we want to send them, them an attache? I think we should. Uh, although we do need to get our command power back up. I spent it all on the admirals. Okay, so now we got to wait even longer. That's unfortunate. Uh, we have a British division in our territory. All right, well, hopefully it gets out before the war. I mean, we'll just destroy them otherwise. Uh, but because these guys are, are not in the British faction, of course, the British are, are not doing so well. But at least they're moving the troops. Though I don't know that that'll have any practical effect. Because I, I think they're just going to put them here. Alright, so the Soviet Union, the focus they were working on was demanding uh, Eastern Poland. And it looks like they refused that demand. And so now the Soviets are at war with the Polish. And who knows how this is going to go. Now, Poland is not communist yet. So they probably won't join the British faction. Hopefully not, anyways. And so that should hopefully keep them out. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens, guys. All right, so we got the diesel-powered emergency pumps. We're going to keep on getting these passive techs here, these bonuses. Uh, so we could go with the shell dies next. That's pretty helpful. Uh, we also need to get the landing craft. I suppose that would be uh, useful to get. We'll probably want to knock Canada out before we get, uh, before we uh, do any naval invasions, I think. Could go and get the torpedo bonus here, the torpedo reveal chance. That's always helpful. I think that's what we're going to do next. Although, you know what? Let's get this one, guys. Because when we use our, our research, or excuse me, our experience, we can get it probably not long after the war start uh, starts. So we got about a month left here, guys. Let's go and take a look at our ships, make sure they all got to their locations. Of course, we have some destroyers here, which we will get assigned to this fleet, uh, this task force. Uh, we could probably, I'm, I'm going to keep these at 50, I think. So we're going to pull out one of these. I don't know if we have any A's. I'm trying to get rid of like the, the oldest ones. So we're going to pull out the A's here and then put them into this one. All right, excellent. So those guys will move over to there. And then what we're going to do with these, I'm hoping they don't get damaged. Uh, we're going to train them up just so we can train up the planes that are on them. Uh, and get them all out there doing the pilot exercise in there. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing with the other task force here. Get these guys trained up. Trained up, and then we'll... I think we assigned all of them, but we might need to do it again. Because they weren't out there. There we go. All right, so let's go to get those guys trained, too. And hopefully n none of the ships get damaged uh, really badly. Uh, so those are the only ones with... Uh, on the Atlantic side that actually have carriers in them. Uh, we will go to get these guys trained as well. And you know, we'll need to wait a second. Here we go. All right. So let their planes train up. I think that will be helpful. And I, I want to say the only th other thing we need to do is if we wanted to keep these guys training. But you know what? I don't think we're going to do that, guys. 
I know we need the Navy experience, but the war's gonna start here in a month. We don't really want all of our ships damaged. So we're just gonna wait. We're just gonna wait, guys. Wait the month, declare war. Uh, just lets us get uh, some of our issues dealt with. Obviously, infantry equipment is a little bit of a problem. I did put another factory into it, so we have... Oh, I didn't. We need to put one more there. So we'll get five in there. So we did get the submarine holes. Excellent. Uh, so I think we have everything we need to build the submarines. So we'll go ahead and do that here in a second. Uh, I think we already have something researching here. So we might go ahead and get some other stuff, guys. A lot of stuff to, to be gotten. Uh, I suppose we can keep going for... Yeah, I guess we can keep going for the, the passive bonuses. Oh, yes, that's right. 1941 industrial tax. We should probably get those. Let's get the dispersed industry, guys. All right. So about 20 days. Again, mainly just focus on getting the, uh, the equipment so, uh, situation improved. And we can pull back probably on a lot of stuff right now. Okay, Anti-tank and anti-air could always pull back on that. But, you know, what? we're just going to pull back on the, uh, the support just to get another factory and infantry equipment. All right, still missing. Hmm, it looks like we actually have, some of our carriers aren't set up the way we want them set up. Okay, so we're gonna have to take a look at that, guys. Probably ones that were already built, and then I just never changed them up. Let's see how this looks. All right, so yeah, we have close air support here. Uh, we don't need close air support right now. Might be something we'll add later, but probably not. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of uh, get rid of any closed air support that are on here. Uh, so yeah, these guys, we're going to delete them. And then just change up the numbers here. Uh, and yeah, this is a terrible... Yeah, this is not the way we want this to look at all. Alright, so we want them to get up to like... We'll do like 40 and 20 here. Just going to bring this down some. There we go, beautiful. Uh, so let's see if there's any other ones that have close air support. It might have only been those ones. Yeah, it's just that one. Uh, at least on that side. Let's take a look at this side here. And see if uh, there's anybody over here. Yeah, we actually have more close air support over here that we don't need. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, delete both of these. And kind of change up the numbers again. So we're looking at 60 here, so we'll do the same over here as what we did there. We might have a little bit of a shortage now on the uh, naval bombers. Uh, possibility on the carrier naval bombers. And then just get them up to 20. There we go. So we'll see how that looks. Uh, so far, it does seem that we're having some number issues. Okay, so we might want to change this up then and, and give them another factory down here for the uh, carrier naval bombers since they are a little bit short uh, as far as carrier fighters. Looks like carrier fighters are okay. It's just the carrier naval bombers that we're having some issues with, though. Okay, there they are right there. We're just short 19. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, the Cypher for Japan has been knocked out. Uh, let's go ahead and do... I guess we'll do France next. I suppose that makes the most sense. Let's do the French. All right, so we can't modify our government, but we wanted to send an attache to France, so we're going to have to wait uh, until we get the 50 command power. So we're just going to have to hold on to our political power for now. We've got... A little over a week before we're declaring war, guys. It's not a lot of time. Soviet Union declared war on Finland. All right, so Soviets are getting very, very aggressive at this point. Still haven't seen them joined, uh, you know, the faction yet. Uh, so we want to take a look at these. Uh, make sure that nobody's, like, damaged here that needs to be repaired. So far, they're looking okay. As far as, like, getting trained up, they did get a bit of experience. They might get to the next level. We'll keep them training, guys. As long as they're not getting damaged, uh, then we're fine. Damn, got somebody driving by there in a loud-ass motorcycle. So as far as the Italian-French war, like how this is, is going, uh, it does look like the French are having some success. Uh, you know, they've been able to conquer almost all of Sardinia. A little bit to left to conquer there, which they probably invaded from Corsica. And then as far as over here, nobody's taking any territory from anybody. So it's, it's essentially just... Uh, you know, probably because of the mountains and the forts, if there are forts. Yeah, they do have forts on the Italian side and the French side. So yeah, the mountain and the forts, I think, is probably the reason why nobody's been able to, to advance there just yet. All right, so we do have these divisions ready to deploy. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we don't have a training arm or anything. Uh, so yeah, we'll just depl deploy them here in Maryland. We'll do both of these at the same time, I suppose. I think we're still short infantry equipment. Uh, let me just make sure. Uh, we're, we're not short. Uh, but yeah, we, we do need to build some up, guys. So we're not going to build any more troops just yet. 
Let's go ahead and get these. We'll get them all just staying here and, and training. We at, at the very least, we don't want them in the green because they get that negative 25% combat modifier. So yeah, it's just unnecessary. Let's get them trained up, guys. Uh, we almost have the 50 uh, command power. And I guess we're going to go and declare war. Yeah, I want to declare war on the first. So let's do it, guys. So let's declare war on the British. And then we'll see what happens. Uh, we will want to get our fleet out there. We don't have any allies to call except for the Philippines, which we don't really want them to be pulled in. All right, there we go. We are at war with the British now, guys. So let's go and get all of our fleets out there. Uh, and then you can see that, you know, they're over here. They won't be able to invade us or anything, uh, of course, because they are, uh, <laughs> you know, on neutral territory right now. Uh, but let's go and get the fleets out there, get these guys stopped training. And then we're going to want their fleets, uh, excuse me, their, uh, the, the planes here to stop training as well. So yeah, we're going to want to do this with all of these. I don't know if there's, should be another one here somewhere. Here we go. Uh, so yeah, they're no longer training. Excellent. All right, so let's go and get them all placed on their missions, though we do want to give them, make sure that they go to their dockyard here before we assign them. Uh, go to their port there before we assign them to the mission so they operate out of that port. Uh, we did get another destroyer build. We'll go and throw them in here. Now, as far as how many uh, screens we'll need here, let's see, we have a total of, what, nine? Yeah, we have a, a total of nine capital ships here. Uh, so I think we're probably good here. It's just a matter of uh, getting them updated. So we'll take the destroyers out and then probably just place them over into this one here. Yeah, we'll just place them over there for now. And then let's get the, uh, uh, you know, get the new, newer ones moving over to this one here. We're going to keep these guys training over on this side. I don't see any reason not to. Uh, but everybody over on this side, obviously, we, we don't want them training. Let's go and get the submarines placed first. Actually, you know, we'll do this task force first. So we're going to want to make sure, oops, we do need to get these moving over here before we assign that task force. So let's go and do these guys then. So let's get them placed on convoy rating and they're going to be operating pretty much everywhere they can reach. We want to make sure we don't have more regions assigned than they have task force. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, we're good to go. All right, so that, that looks great. Uh, so this is where these submarines will operate out of. And we will want these guys doing the convoy protecting, uh, but they can't really reach all that far, so they're only going to be able to protect the regions around here. We might actually wait to assign those and see what happens. Let's see if the, uh, the British even attempt to sink any of our ships. Alright, so that looks good. Let's go and get the planes assigned now. Uh, so I did get naval bombers in all these regions here. We have some tactical bombers right here and some northern naval bombers. So these guys are going to do naval bombing from here. They should be able to reach this entire sea zone between these two. Looks like maybe not that that one province right there. But. So we should hopefully get air support in most battles. Now we do have some tactical bombers here, but these guys are instead going to be supporting us over here. Uh, with the the naval strike and then we have uh, some more tactical bombers over here they're gonna be supporting us in this region all right now we need to place these guys onto the Florida close uh, the Florida coast excuse me now you can see here we're not gonna reach all of it unfortunately we'd have to build another uh, another air base somewhere where we could we could do that I'm gonna bring these guys into the Caribbean and these guys as well. As you can see, we also won't be able to cover the entire Caribbean. So that's unfortunate. And I think that's it. Yeah, I believe that's it for the, the planes. We do have some fighters, of course. But they're all up on here uh, in case the Canadians join. So we're just waiting for this to get to 50. I don't think there's anything else to do other than wait for these fleets to go in. Let's go and move this down some. They did bring Bulgaria into the conflict. And it looks like we have already sunk a British submarine. Fantastic. Uh, so we're still waiting for these guys to get in there before we actually put the fleet out. All right, so they should all be in there now. Excellent. So let's go and get the fleet out there patrolling and stuff. Uh, we want these four, and we'll go and assign oops, them to their areas. We're not going to operate in air, any area where we do not have naval bomber support for our main fleet, guys. So we're going to want to operate here 
here. We're gonna to want to operate in these two regions here and the Caribbean. And I think that's it. I know that we have tactical bomber support in us here, but tactical bombers just aren't as good. So yeah, we're just gonna cover these two for right now. We'll change it up a little bit later. Uh, so let's go and have them set to patrol. So they'll be patrolling those three regions there. Uh, these guys here are obviously naval invasion support, so they won't need to be set to anything just yet since we're not gonna have them do that. These guys will be set up to do the strike force. All right, so we'll definitely control these regions here. And I don't know if I that uh that that guy I just assigned. Okay. I just want to make sure he wasn't a a miner a mining ship. All right, so we're just doing the uh the naval battles now, trying to bomb their whatever ships they happen to have around here. Here we go. We got our first uh, actual battle here engaging 20 submarines trying to sink their convoys uh, and uh Oh, no, no, excuse me. These are our uh, convoys and our submarines. I flipped this here. Uh, so they're trying to engage our convoys. All right, so that's a problem. So we do have some convoy raiding here. We do have enemy submarines. All right, so that's good to know. So with that in mind, we will want to protect as much as we can here. I just wanted to make sure that they're actually going to sink them before we, we put our, uh, our task force out there. So yeah, let's go ahead and have these guys do the convoy escort. And remember, they can only escort through some of these zones because they just don't have the uh, the range to do it through most of these. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do it through any areas where we actually have some convoys going through and that we can reach, which again, there aren't many uh, places we can reach there. So our uh, ships should arrive, help out. We've already lost one convoy here. Uh, these of course are, are not troops. These are just our freight convoys, but obviously, uh, you know, they will hit us when it comes to the resources. And you can see that their fleet has arrived here. All right. Um, I believe we should be able to reach there, right? Okay, so these guys are assigned over to here. These guys obviously cannot help. Okay, so that's a problem. Yeah, that's definitely a problem. We might want to have these guys instead help out here, at least in that battle. So that they'll uh, get over there and, and do a little bit of bombing here. We could also assign some fighters since the fighters right now aren't doing anything. Uh, the ones that we have up here, they're just kind of sitting around right now. So let's go ahead and assign a fighter wing to attempt to, to help out here. And do some air superiority. Try and sink the enemy, uh, or shoot, excuse me, shoot down the enemy naval bombers and their, their fighters as well. All right, so our fleet is arriving. Uh, we did lose two submarines. Okay. And now you can see the big battle happening here. So this is our first big battle against their fleet already. Very, very early, guys. Uh, so we definitely want to win this. You can see their submarines are attempting to flee now. Trying to get out of there. We haven't sunk any of them just yet. Uh, this is, of course, our uh, four carriers here that have arrived with the two battleships and the seven heavy cruisers. And yeah, I do think that they might outnumber us here as far as yeah capital ships. Uh, but obviously we have the more carriers, so uh, us controlling the sky is going to be significant here. So yeah, we'll watch this battle. Uh, this is the only battle happening. We've already sunk one of their submarines. There we go. We're sinking all kinds of stuff now. We sunk three destroyers, two submarines, one heavy cruiser. Uh, yeah, we're doing doing a lot here. This is helping. Uh, it looks like their their carrier has evacuated. All their ships are now leaving. Uh, they have lost. They've taken two heavy losses here. They're trying to get the hell out of here. So this is a win for us, guys. Uh, definitely a win. Yeah, we can see we continue to sink stuff. There we go. Excellent. So the battle is done. Let's go and take a look at all these battles. Uh, two British submarines sunk there. Uh, two more sunk there. And then here, of course, the big battle where we lost two submarines and had several planes shot down and lost one convoy. That's really not much. Uh, and then we sunk six of their submarines, one heavy cruiser. So the first capital ship of the war has been sunk. Two light cruisers, nine destroyers, and shot down uh, a bit more planes than they shot down of ours. So definitely a, a success there. So that was big. That was very, very helpful. Uh, big battle for us. Big naval battle. Sunk some of their ships. Got some wins there. Sunk another submarine. All right, so this is, again, this is going to be the opening of the conflict. The sinking the British fleet, which we're, we're very, very effective so far for the fact that it's only been going on a week and we've already sunk in a battleship. A battleship, another destroyer, uh, one submarine there. So two capital ships have been sunk in this conflict already. Uh, they're op trying to operate on our coast and that is just not a good way to do it because they don't have any support here. Another submarine sunk there. So yeah, this is going quite well, guys. Yeah, we're just tearing their fleet up at this point. Okay, beautiful. 
So good to, to see that and to see that this has been effective. The Canadians have not joined just yet, so there's nothing we can really do as far as attacking. Now, we can go after their islands, and that's actually what we're going to do with these troops here. Uh, but we wouldn't be able to do it anyways until we gained control of the sea in these zones, which we do have control. Uh, but we don't want our, our ships to get sunk. We do have, of course, two task force, though, that escort them. Uh, but even then, it's probably a good idea to get them uh, destroyed. So we can now create our faction. So let's go ahead and get that focus done. I want to be helpful. We'll see who is willing to join the faction. So out here, where our sub, where excuse me, where our escorts can operate, they are going to be able to sink our convoys with impunity. We can move our uh, convoys around, kind of determine where they where they'll be able to go through. But frankly, uh, as long as our, our fleets can't really reach out here, we're going to have some trouble. Now, we can send the bigger fleets out to that zone, I suppose, if we wanted to. We'll see how, how much they engage us there. And if it's a lot, then yeah, we might want to uh, to do it. All right, so more military factories are needed. So let's go ahead and do that. Build out in these 100% uh, locations, or some of them. Got a nice 60% there. All right, so just build a few more military factories, guys. Get those numbers up, man. Because I still am not quite happy with where our, our factories are at. All right, so we did do a little bit of bombing there. These are tactical bombers, and they're having some, some, some success. We did sink some submarines there. All right, excellent. Another submarine sunk, and we'll be pulling the troops out of here, or excuse me, pulling the planes out of here as we get them done. So let's see where we want to assign these guys to. Not really any bombing happened there. Uh, we don't have a naval bomber situated here, so let's actually put him here, since this is where it seems like where it's all going down right now, guys. So we're going to put a naval bomber there, and we'll see if we have anything else to move over here. We got some fighters, of course, and we'll just move these guys up here. And we also have some, uh, excuse me, some close air support. Uh, remember, close air support can also do bombing. That's one of the things they're capable of doing. So move those fighters there. How many close air support do we have in here? All right, we're going to move another close air support right up there. Uh, we could also move planes over here to support us there. That would be an option as well. Uh, let's get, where are they at? Over here. Move over there. Almost done with these heavy fighters, which will be able to provide coverage here. I'm going to let them fully train, though. And that will be our first air wing of heavy fighters that we'll have done training up there. Just a little bit more training, and then they'll they'll be able to, to deploy. Get them that full combat bonus. feel like it's worth it to just wait a little while and get that done. Uh, so no no fleets uh, being engaged right now. And yeah, not really seeing anything happen there. We'll keep these guys training on this side again. I think that would be wise. Uh, make sure that we're, we're earning Navy experience like in times here where we're not, not fighting. Uh, so we did finish up our... Uh, the, the Havoc planes here, which are the uh, close air support. So we'll have to get those updated. Uh, again, we're not getting the, the carrier models here. I don't think that's necessary at this point. So let's go ahead and do the... Let's do the tactical bombers next, guys. 110 days to, to knock that out. And let's go ahead and get these guys updated. We do have some uh, resource issues. Looks like we're not getting all of our resources. That's what the problem is because of lack of trade. So we might have to move our trade laws. And I did forget to send the attache, hey, guys. Damn it. We got to 50 and then I forgot. I knew I was going to. So let's go ahead and do this, guys. Uh, so we can get the, obviously, the war support's helpful. Uh, but yeah, we're going to want to uh, get that army experience. So let's go ahead and do this. Oh, they would not accept. They do have to accept. Would the Italians accept? I don't really want them to, to win or anything. But you know what? We can't do either of these. All right, that's a bummer. So that won't be an option. All right, so we, we held on to that political power for nothing because yeah, neither side will accept. I should have checked that beforehand before we saved onto it. Uh, whatever, it's fine. Uh, whatever we're getting here is going to be for the land anyway, so it's not... Wouldn't have been all that helpful anyways. So let's go ahead and go with... Uh, yeah, here's going to be land. This is the infantry attack and defense that we're getting. And then over here... I don't know if I had decided which one to get. But I think we're going to do the division recovery right here. I think that's the best one to get. Uh, but let's go and get the Mark Clark one, the increased attack and defense first. All right, excellent. So that'll improve our infantry's ability. 
That's a bummer we can't do the attach aid because yeah, we we need experience bad. And we have 17s. So we can make an adjustment, like one adjustment. We already filled these guys out. Uh, the big red one still needs the, the last company here, but it's not that important because we're doing the logistic companies, guys, and we're not really having supply issues just yet. So, yeah, there's no reason to do that just yet uh, when we have so many other things to get. And I suppose we could start working on those uh, medium tanks since we have those built in and we're not doing anything with them yet. Uh, 17 experience is not much. We won't be able to do very much with those. And yeah, we wouldn't even be able to, like, change these out at all. Uh, we don't even have mechanized yet. So we'd have to put motorized in them, uh, unfortunately. You know what, guys? I think it's going to... Yeah, I think we're going to need a lot of experience to get this done to make anything even remotely close to what we want. Uh, so what it might be better to do is go ahead and work on these Marines first, though they got a lot of stuff to do as well. All right, you know what? Let's just stay, save the experience, guys. Let's just save it till we have a bit more uh, so we can do a bit more with it and maybe get those medium tanks done or, or close to done. Soviet Union has defeated Finland. So far, nothing really happening that I want to see happen uh, with the, the factions, guys. Uh, just nobody's joining... The, the British faction for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. Why that's going down that way. I'm surprised by it though. Because I really thought somebody would have joined a faction by this point. Uh, maybe just the Europeans just hate each other too much. <laughs> they just do not want to ally with each other. Uh, so we did get a dockyard constructed. Excellent. Uh, so let's go ahead and, I mean, we could build more convoys. I don't think that's necessary though. I think we got our first mining ship done. So I want to go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, let's see where we want to get this assigned. So we have two carrier, or excuse me, one carrier going and two battleships going right now. Could go ahead and start putting into another carrier, but I really feel like our screens are are not where they need to be at. Uh, so you know what? Let's go ahead and put this into. Let's get more attack cruisers, guys. Uh, we are short on steel because of the the lack of trade here. There's nothing to get from the Greeks apparently. Could go ahead and trade, continue trading with the Japanese. Or we could trade with the French. Is Finland... Yeah, okay, so they just lost that territory. It was a white piece, and they lost that little uh, little bit of territory there. So we could trade with them. No reason not to trade with them. Uh, could also trade with Chile. I think that would be good. Uh, looks like we are having some efficiency issues, so we're not getting all the steel we could get from there. Nothing to be done about it, guys. Uh, not just yet, anyways. And then we'll have to trade with somebody else. Let's trade with, I guess, the Soviets, or we could keep trading with the Japanese. No, let's trade with the uh, the French. With the idea that we're helping them out against the Italians. Now, we also need some aluminum. And luckily, we have an absolute insane number of civilian factories, guys. So, again, I'm not too worried about having to trade so many of them away. I mean, you can see here we're still building a lot at a time. Uh, so... It's not really an issue, guys. That's why I'm not too worried about changing up the, the trade laws yet. Let's get that research bonus as long as we possibly can. When we're going for all three branches, you know what? We could probably speed this up because I thought there's going to be a lot more naval battles to look at, but they're scared. <laughs> their fleet, I think, is probably left. Yeah, looks like their fleet is left. They don't want none of it. Yep, they have given up. And you see that we have, you know, our almost all of our fleet out there. We have our, our planes out there, and we still have no fuel issues. Uh, so it's pretty much what I expected. Uh, it's just not a problem right now, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and get... Uh, let's see how, what we want to get next. Could go ahead and go into one more in the support cruiser. And good God, man, the cars. Some of them are pretty loud out there. Uh, looks like we have extra rubber uh, that we don't need. Okay, we'll stop trading with them for so much. Still need more steel, though. Let's go ahead and trade more with the French. Because who really knows who's going to be an enemy at this point? I really couldn't tell you. Because, yeah, nobody's joining factions like I expected them to do. Maybe once we join a faction, I'll encourage others to. I don't know. We'll have to see, guys. All right, so, yeah. One convoy was uh, sunk there by our submarines. Fantastic. So, remember, if they attempt to send, you know, if they have any troops here, they'll have to supply them. Uh, so that'll result in us being able to sink any convoys supplying those. If they send any more troops, then we'd be able to sink those as well. Uh, so we got the shell dies. What is still left here to get? Uh, I suppose we can do the electric torpedo next. Yeah, let's go and do that next. And yeah, we will expend the experience as well. All right, so we do have some ships done. Uh, the the wolf hunters is done. I thought we finished a mining ship. Huh. 
Yeah, I'm not entirely sure where that one went. That we, I know we finished one. Here it is. All right, my bad, guys. I put it in the wrong place. So let's go ahead and move these guys here. And then we'll get that mining ship pulled out here. And then he'll just move into... Where are these guys operating? Because we want them to mine here. We might just have them have their own task force. Yeah, I think that's probably the best way to do this, guys. Just have the miners have their own, excuse me, their own fleet. So we can assign them exactly where we want them. Because they do, uh, all the regions they do, uh, you know, it's, it's the more regions they do reduces the, the number of mines they're placing in each one. Uh, so it's better to have them just assigned to the regions you want. And there's no point on putting them in certain areas because mines just don't do well, particularly deep oceans, guys. So we want them up here on the shallow sea. And I don't think we have any other fleets here that are just assigned to the shallow fleet. Let's go and create a new fleet here, a new task force, and then, and then a new fleet. And we will go ahead and give them an icon here. So they're gonna be miners. I guess we'll use this one here for the miners. And we even change the icon here as well, since this is just a mine task force. And they can be pink, I suppose. All right, excellent. So we're going to get them out there mining. After there's two of them, wait till we have two guys. Obviously, we don't want him doing strike force. Yeah, we'll wait till we have two, so they'll more likely to survive. If we get one sunk, then we have the the whole you know task force gets destroyed, and I got to recreate it and stuff. All right, so yeah, we're not seeing anybody join the factions, which is unfortunate. Because yeah, I want to attack the Canadians, but can't do that until they join the British. They'll be a little bit less likely to initially because they'll be scared of us with us on our borders or on their borders. They won't want to join. You know, let's actually go up to eight for the support cruisers and get more of those built. Yeah, I wasn't happy with the cruiser numbers. Obviously, destroyer numbers are, are also not quite where I'd like. We only have one line of destroyers. We're probably going to want to get another line of them. So we can get those destroyers built a little bit quicker and get them updated. Uh, but yeah, I really want the light cruisers out there uh, because those, even those level three destroyers guys are gonna uh, reduce the overall range of our fleets. So what we'd want to do is with certain fleets, we're probably gonna want to pull all the destroyers out and support cruisers will be the ones that'll be sinking enemy submarines when that, when that fleet engages them. And then the destroyers will act as the patrollers. So they'll fight in the battles too, so they can help us with submarines because the patrol fleet typically sticks around and fights uh, even after the uh, strike force gets there. Uh, let's go and get the uh, self-propelled artillery. Now, I've had some people like, well, why are you uh, why are you building light tanks? Like, uh, you know, light tanks are garbage. Uh, you know, go straight to medium tanks and abandon the light tanks. The reason why I do light tanks, guys, is because I find light tanks to be incredibly powerful. Uh, they can't beat medium tanks. They can't beat heavy tanks, but that's not what they're for. If you're using your light tanks to fight bigger tanks, um, more armored tanks, then you're not using them effectively. Light tanks are incredibly fast. That's what they do well. And with light tanks, you can utilize them to, you know, take victory points, you know, really quickly. You can utilize them to get around troops very easily and get them cut off and destroyed. Light tanks are just so powerful, guys, uh, just because of the speed. That's what gives them their power. And I feel like they're useful all the way into the late game. I, I use them for a long time. I like them. Let me go and start getting, uh, making sure that we have radar coverage all through here. Uh, which, as you can see, we don't have any right there, so we'd want to get a radar built there. I was waiting to continue to build this until we saw like how good our coverage was, and you can see it's it's pretty good. It's really just this hole here, which I didn't know where the hole was going to be uh, at the time. So let's do. I think we'll do uh, North Carolina. We could also do Virginia. Either of these, I think, would would cover that. We'll do North Carolina. Get that built up fully, and we can also get an airbase here in South Carolina. May build up that just a little bit, so we can use that there. I don't think there's anything else needed here. We're gonna see if we can't get some more steel by building infrastructure. I think we looked at this before, but maybe we could be a little less picky, or maybe we already did that. Yeah, it looks like I built everywhere where there's steel. I am not seeing anything to be gained except for some aluminum there. You always get more oil too, and it it's, uh, allows us to to build faster there, I suppose. So that's just an added benefit. So aluminum is something that we are having to trade for, so might as well go ahead and also build uh, infrastructure up in the aluminum provinces. And get like a lot of uh, uh, tungsten there for, for trading purposes. We won't need it for our factories, but might as well do that as well. And yeah, I guess we'll just get this all built up, guys. 
just get the infrastructure all through here. You know, we need the aluminum, so it's helpful. Uh, and then we got the military factories building. Let's do some more dockyards. Do some dockyards through here. And over here in California as well. All right, fantastic. We should keep them busy for a little while. But yeah, the British fleet is gone. They might be repairing or they might have given up. Uh, they might have said, hey, we ain't gonna, we're not gonna win this. Uh, you know, they control the coast and, you know, they have the the, uh, the land-based naval bombers to, to attack us with and and therefore uh, we should not be there. If they're smart, they won't come back because they're just going to allow us to, to sink their, their ships. As far as casualties go here, uh, how many they've lost in the sea, uh, yeah, it looks like they didn't lose any. Uh, when you sink ships, you don't always uh, actually you know, kill anybody. There's a percentage of uh, survivors and I think in like shallow sea areas here that aren't cold and don't have shark problems I, I think you get like a hundred percent of the survivors which doesn't make sense uh, but I think that is the case I think it's only in areas where they have the uh, the penalties uh, so let me just see if I can find I know there's sharks over here there we go there's a shark one so casualties on sink plus 60% so that means you're gonna lose 60% uh, of, of the the sailors that are on your ships. There's also ones up here, which will do the same as well. Casualties on sink plus 20%. So other, other than that, you don't, you don't actually kill anybody, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Some people should die. I feel maybe like a percentage it doesn't have to be a high percentage, but I feel like some should die. It's kind of weird uh, that none do. Uh, but yeah, you can see that we have sunk some of their ships here We're getting uh 20 war participation from them sinking ships. Or from us sinking ships, excuse me. All right, so let's go and get this military factory sign. We're gonna see what we're lacking. Obviously, infantry equipment is, is short, but we're getting that improved. Uh, we need more strategic bombers, and we already put some towards the naval bombers. I feel like that's uh, the carrier naval bombers. I feel like that's probably enough. The three factories to get what we need, guys. Yeah, I feel like that's enough. Getting these all built out here. Uh, let's go ahead and do. Yeah, I wish we had the the mechanized. I never did research that though. Uh, so yeah, I didn't uh, prioritize it as much as I should have. I guess let's do more light tanks because we're gonna build more light tank divisions once we have the infantry equipment situation dealt with. At least get the equipment out to our troops. All right, so yeah, a lot less battle than I was expecting and yeah, we're kind of stuck just waiting for somebody to join this conflict. Uh, again, once we get these troops here, finish training which they might be they're almost done and then we'll do the naval invasion of Bermuda so we'll be able to do some stuff next episode we'll do that naval invasion there but other than the Bermuda now there's not really anything to do I, I don't want to work on invading the British uh, in their homeland until after we've wiped out Canada I don't want to send a bunch of troops across the sea so yeah we need to wipe out Canada first and so we need them to join the faction or find some other way to be able to declare war on them but they're not going to get any world tension so yeah, I'm not entirely sure how we're going to get them in if they don't join the British faction. I was hoping that by declaring war on the British, that that would be enough to get them in the faction, but apparently that's not the case. All right, so yeah, a lot of uh, resource issues, guys. Probably best to trade with the Japanese since they're you know, on this side and the British aren't even over there uh, doing anything or causing us any issues. So probably best to trade with them. Uh, rubber is not too much of an issue. We won't trade for that just yet. Uh, but we do need more aluminum, but that's not gonna be a problem for much longer uh, once we get that uh, infrastructure built So, you know, what? I'm not even gonna mess with it guys. Uh, I know we'll take some penalty to our plane production, but it's fine It'll be fixed soon I'm Going to get some more uh, planes put out here for training get Those guys out there some more tactical bombers. Those are gonna be helpful again for this conflict against the, uh, the British fleet I'm Going to get some more planes out there or fighters excuse me and their planes I suppose but I meant fighters and uh, what else do we got? Just got some close air support. And you know, I'm just gonna go to get all these, whatever ones we want out there now. Uh, we got some more heavy fighters we can put out there. And maybe some more naval bombers. Yeah, more naval bombers as well. All right, so let's go to get all these guys trained up. All right, fantastic. And these ones are not training. Let's go ahead and fix that. All right, so yeah, uh, we're not even fighting the British fleet anymore. That's unfortunate. Uh, let's go back up to speed five then, as we're just kind of waiting for something to happen here. Somebody to join the faction. Uh, there's only so much I can do. I think there's nobody else to declare war on right now. 
and I got to get Canada knocked out. Uh, so we need to get that updated. Let's go and get the, the medium tanks, uh, the new ones. And get these out there building. All right. Uh, so yeah, just kind of limited because we're a democracy. And looks like Australia has joined. Okay. And with this, these are all the countries that are going to join our faction. Uh, so we got Colombia in. We got Costa Rica, uh, Ecuador, Honduras, Panama, Uruguay, Cuba, Haiti, Chile. Excellent. So we have a faction now, and these are all independent countries that are in the faction, meaning that we are about to get a ton of new operatives. We should get quite a few new operatives. We can also become the spy master, so let's go ahead and do that with that political power that we have there. Yeah, let's go and become the new spy master. And you can see we're at four right now. I, I feel like it should be higher than that. Hmm. Uh, we're not getting the one from spy master just yet, I don't think. So yeah, maybe five operatives. So we'll actually be able to start doing some uh, some operations, some missions against the British, I suppose. So yeah, we got that knocked out. We have our own faction. So that's good news. Uh, let's see what we want to get next. Uh, obviously, these war plans, you know, they give us some, some benefits, some attack and defense bonuses. Uh, so we could continue doing those, get the war plan red. But yeah, it's just not... Yeah, it's just not necessary to do that right now. Uh, we got other stuff to get. So over here, we have the military construction. Uh, I didn't realize that we needed to do that. Uh, but we didn't have high enough war support, so it wasn't lighting up, and that's why I didn't see it. Uh, we can get the Manhattan Project, get research bonuses for those. But you know what? I think we should get this here, guys. This is going to increase infrastructure. Uh, we should probably stop building infrastructure in those areas then. Uh, Louisiana, Texas, and California. It's going to give us more army experience, which is obviously quite precious for us right now. And it's going to get some military factories, and they'll let us keep going down this route here. So yeah, uh, I think that's the one we're going to get next. Obviously, a lot of other great choices available as well. Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's probably the best one for us right now, guys. So yeah, let's go to get that. So we'll knock out this one here, and that'll give us quite a few good things there. Uh, though I'm surprised we can do that. War support to 11%. I thought it said it needed to be at uh, 30%. Oh no, or be at war. Okay, so that makes sense. We're going to get that knocked out. And let's stop building infrastructure in uh, these regions. Or we'll just stop building until we have like three. Yeah, this will actually fit quite nicely. So yeah, we just want to build one more. And then that will get maxed out from that focus there. Uh, and then what was the other one? Louisiana, right? Yeah, and Louisiana... Uh, It'll go up to eight and give us more oil, I suppose. All right. And of course, these are just telling everybody that these guys have all joined our faction. So the Australians are now at war with us. That means that we are at risk of uh, being invaded here. So let's go ahead and build up the, uh, uh, not the, the naval bases, the coastal forts in any regions where we might get attacked, any islands where we might get attacked. So Phoenix Island is obviously the most likely to be attacked. Uh, we could also build here in Wake Island. All this is going to help us against the Japanese, so go up to, to level 5 here for these. Could do the Lion Islands as well. Let's just do level 2 for the Lion Islands, because I assume they'd invade Phoenix Island first, and then obviously uh, Hawaii will go up to level 5 as well. Could do a two island. So yeah, just get some, uh, get ourselves some some coastal forts here. All right, looking good. Uh, we'll have to pay attention for any potential naval invasions. So with the Australians here, they might come and operate over here. I'm not entirely sure. We'll just have to wait and see. We'll see if they come over here and if we even want to send uh, our Pacific fleet over there to do anything. I don't know if it's going to be necessary or not. You know, Australia doesn't really exactly have a massive navy here, guys. They have a uh, you know, about maybe 30 ships, so not a ton. But yeah, I'm glad to see a, a faction here. Look at this, just beautiful. Uh, and then hopefully we'll get uh, more people willing to join. Do we want everybody to join the conflict, though? Yeah, I mean, I don't see why, though this might result in in uh, South American countries joining our enemies. That often happens. Uh, once one country in South America has gone to the war, then it creates threat for all the neighboring countries and then that often kind of spirals and then everybody joins a faction but yeah i think we will go and do this we're going to pull everybody in guys if they want to join i see no reason not to have them join and who knows what to do maybe they help out though i don't want them to take bermuda 
So hopefully they don't do that. Uh, though they might give it back to us just because we have more war participation than them. So yeah, we're going to let everybody join. All of our allies. And now we do actually get notifications uh, about invasions against our allies. Before you didn't do that, so when you brought them in, you're like, oh, what if they, what if they get attacked? Well, that's no longer a problem, guys. So let's go and send these guys. It'd be far better to send Marines than uh, five 40 width divisions uh, into a naval invasion, but that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, so we're going to be attacking Bermuda. Now these guys are all trained up. And you know what? I did this wrong. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll just create a new army for these guys. It's fine. And this can be like our, for now, our little kind of naval invasion army here. And we'll want to put them over here. All right, so make sure they're underneath that field marshal there. Do need to give them a general. And I think we're going to do Truscut. Yeah, I think we'll do him. I don't know if we'll use him for uh, naval invasions the entire time or if we'll later have him do paratrooping. Uh, but getting him the... Uh, the trait for naval invasions would be helpful, the invader trait. So yeah, we'll go ahead and have him do the invasion of Bermuda, uh, those five divisions there. And I think those troops here are not set to train while these guys are, so let's go and stop them. And then set these ones up to train here. Alright, excellent. So we did get the dispersed industry four. Uh, let's go ahead and do, uh, well, I guess construction? We could do construction next. Uh, no, 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 we want to do this rubber one. Uh, we have a lot of refineries, so one plus rubber for each refinery would be super helpful. Uh, but to get the regimental combat teams, we're going to continue down here, get the mechanized offensive. Uh, I don't know if there's any... I, I want to say we looked at this, but I don't remember, so I'm just going to look at it again. See if we have any bonuses uh, for researching the land doctrines. Yeah, none here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our actual army branch here and see if there's any here. I think there's at least one. But maybe not. Yeah, I'm not seeing any here. Yeah, none throughout here. None there. You know, maybe we don't have any land doctor ones. Uh, I think we already got the the only one that we were gonna get. Yeah, doesn't look like there's any uh, land doctrines here. So we could just keep on researching all the way down that. There's really no reason not to. All right, just wanted to double check on that. All right, so we're just gonna get into August here, and then we're gonna have to end the episode, guys. Not as much uh, combat as I thought. I thought the Canadians might join. They did not. And there wasn't as many naval battles as I was expecting. Though, looks like we are here in the Caribbean uh, attempting to detect somebody here. Uh, so we have a little bit of a, a fleet here, a British fleet. So we'll be engaging those. It seems that we are already actually engaging down here. We got uh, destroyers sunk. All right, awesome. Our, our planes are, are doing that. All right, so we sunk some British destroyers. Looking at what they have left for their fleet, guys. They're still a very, very large fleet here, uh, as you can see. I have sunk a lot of their submarines, though. So might not have issues with the submarines uh, for much longer uh, since we have sunk uh, enough of them to, to cause them some issues there. Uh, but yeah, still a lot of uh, uh, British ships left to sink. And yeah, we're only at war with the British and the Bulgarians right now, so there's just not a lot to do. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why everybody is he so hesitant to join factions right now. Uh, I'm surprised by that. Uh, I thought there would be a, uh, everybody be joining the, the British faction by this point, or even the Italian faction, for for that uh, matter. I, it could be either one, but they're not joining uh, either of them for whatever reason. So yeah, we'll invade Bermuda, and you know what, guys? If they never pull Canada into the faction, then we'll just from Bermuda we'll have to you know obviously get control of the sea here, and then we'll have to. Uh, and Bay Britain. Uh, it's going to be kind of difficult to do uh, because of the lack of range and there's nobody else to attack. Uh, so, yeah, it might be a, a little bit uh, troublesome. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we can do, get it done and uh, get the invasion done over here. But yeah, it's going to be risky because we're going to be going into their sea zones in that case, you know, where they'll have land based uh, air support. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be tricky to do that. I was expecting somebody else to join, and then we'll, we'll have a lot of points to invade in. Uh, I didn't really want to have to invade the British first. But yeah, if that's the way we'll, we have to do it, then that's the way we'll have to do it, guys. How many troops do they have? Let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, division wise, we have no idea. <laughs> Between 31 to 104. Uh, so maybe about the number that we have. Probably about the number we have. That's what it seems like. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go and end the episode here. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode. And thanks for watching.